1997 was so awesome. Hey guys, I'm Alex. Thanks for clicking. And uh, welcome to this lesson on learning English with Final Fantasy VII. So this is one of my favorite games of all time. I absolutely love it. Came out 1997, great year, great game. I know that a lot of you guys also learn English in this way. When I meet new students and they have never gone you know, to school to study English, I always ask them, so where did you learn your English? Usually they say movies, music, and video games. So today I thought it would be a great idea if I took one of my favorite games and one of the most popular games in history of video games and taught you English with it. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna play the first 30 minutes of the game. I'm gonna show you some screenshots of the dialogue and I'm going to explain the grammar the vocabulary, the pronunciation, all that stuff. So let's not waste any time and let's learn English with Final Fantasy VII. Yes! Okay, so before we jump into the game, let's talk a little bit about its history and then we'll set up the story and then we'll get to the dialogue. So Final Fantasy VII was and is a Japanese role-playing game. So some of the features, characteristics of Japanese role-playing games are hit points, uh, there's a world that is dying, there's probably one hero, usually male, who has to save everything, and uh, everything gets really complicated and weird. It's most Japanese role-playing games. Now, this game was released in 1997, great year, for the Sony PlayStation and it is now available on PC, iOS, and the PlayStation Store, if you have that. And there's also a remake being planned uh, that's gonna come out, we don't know when, all right? It's coming though, and I'm pretty excited about that. Now, Final Fantasy VII, why is it a big deal? It popularized the JRPG genre in North America. JRPG, Japanese role-playing game. And again, it is long, complicated, has a huge story, and it is told with beautiful, at the time, cinematic cutscenes. So let's jump into the story now. What's happening in Final Fantasy VII? You know, there's an evil corporation. They're called Shinra. They are sucking the life from the planet. The life energy in the story is called Mako, Mako energy. And this evil corporation, Shinra, is using factories to suck, literally suck the life from the planet. So the planet is dying. It's not a happy time for anyone. At the beginning of the game, there's a rebel group called Avalanche, and they arrive outside of a Shinra factory. And they don't like this evil corporation. All they want to do is kind of just blow up all their factories so that they won't be able to suck the energy from the planet. And again, in this rebel group, we have Barrett. He's a guy with a gun on his arm. And we have Cloud, who's the guy with the big sword. I'm really cool. Yeah, I guess. All right, so let's jump into the game. So we start the game at a Shinra factory. Cloud, Barrett, Biggs, Wedge, Jesse, they all arrive on a train. And they jump off the train and Barrett says, come on newcomer, follow me. This is the first line in the game. Now Barrett is talking to Cloud. Cloud is actually not part of Avalanche. He's a mercenary, which means he works for money. So he's not really a nice guy at the start of this game. Debatably, not even at the end, I don't know. So the word come on, you see the way it's contracted here, C with an apostrophe, M-O-N, it means come on. And this can be used in a variety of contexts, can have different meanings. So come on can just mean come. So you can say, okay, come, come, come on, come on, come on. It can also mean let's go. If you want to leave somewhere, you can say, come on, all right, let's go. It can mean hurry up. If someone is behind you, you can say, come on, come on, hurry up, go faster. 
And it can also mean, I don't believe it, or you must be joking. Now here, the intonation is very important. So you don't say, come on. You say, come on, come on, really? Okay, so it's a great word, many different contexts, many different uses, especially in spoken English. So repeat after me first. We'll say the, you must be joking. Come on. It's fun, right? Say it one more time. Come on. Exactly, it's fun. So again, um, another one. So we say, come on. If you want to say, come here, you can also say, come here, very quickly in spoken English. So let's say it first. Come on. Come here. Okay, now let's get inside the factory and see what's going on. So they enter the factory. Biggs, one of the mercenaries of the group Avalanche, says, wow, to Cloud. He's speaking to Cloud. Says, wow, you used to be a soldier, huh? And again, soldier is the name of a mercenary group or some kind of special military or warrior group that Cloud used to be a part of. And Big says, not every day, meaning it is not every day, ya find one in a group like Avalanche. Ya just means you. Again, this game, they really tried very hard to make the translation um, as North American as possible. So there you go, ya. And again, Biggs, you used to be in Soldier. So if you don't know, used to, you can use to talk about past truths, past habits, past situations. The structure is used to plus base verb. For example, I used to work at McDonald's. I don't work at McDonald's now. I did in the past. He used to be a programmer. This was his job in the past. He's not a programmer now. And then Biggs keeps talking to Cloud. And at this point, he doesn't know Cloud's name. So Biggs says, I didn't catch your name. So in this sense, catch means I didn't get, I didn't understand it, or I didn't hear it the first time. So if you're, you know, having a conversation, but you're busy and, you know, you don't catch something, you could say, Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. I didn't hear it the first time. And sometimes it's because you're not paying attention or a variety of other reasons. I can catch anything because I'm so fast. Okay, that's great. Let's keep going. So they keep moving through the factory and then Barrett starts talking a little bit more about the situation that's going on in the planet. He says, little by little, the reactors will drain all the life then that'll be that. So you can see that he's using contractions here. The reactors will, that'll, and again, all just means will. So this is very useful in spoken English, not really written very much, honestly. Um, so you could say, for example, when'll you be here? Instead of when will, when'll, right? When'll you be here? And we don't know when that'll change. So that will, that'll. Uh, I wrote a whole bunch of possible contractions that you can use with this construction. Um, so let's do some quick pronunciation. Repeat after me. Who'll, yeah. when'll, where'll, what'll, how'll, while, This'll, that'll, these'll, those'll. Now, by themselves, they sound weird and difficult to pronounce, but when you put them in a sentence and say, you know, that will very quickly, um, you know, it does sound easier and it's smooth. That'll change. That'll be everything, for example. So they keep going. And eventually they get to the reactor that they want to blow up. And then Barrett notices that there's a monster coming after Cloud sets a bomb. And he says, heads up, here it comes. And this is the first boss fight in the game. So heads up simply means to pay attention or to look out. So, you know, 
if you notice something, like maybe there are some people playing a game of soccer beside you, and you notice the ball is coming towards you and your group of friends, you're the only one who sees it, you say, heads up! So everyone can look up and, you know, hopefully avoid the soccer ball. Next, the reactor and the bomb is set. You have 10 minutes to escape after destroying this, like, red scorpion machine monster thing. And you're running back and Cloud sees one of your team members, Jesse. Jesse says, my leg got stuck. So this means she is unable to move because of an obstruction. How did her leg get stuck? Who knows? So for example, you could say, I'll be late. I'm stuck in traffic. Uh, so here we go. They go inside the factory. They defeat a like scorpion monster thing. They run out. Jesse somehow gets her leg stuck. You run out of the factory. There's a big Hollywood-like explosion and the whole team escapes. And now let's keep going and see what happens next. After escaping from the factory, Barrett says, rendezvous at Sector 8 station. Split up and get on the train. So rendezvous from French just means to meet. And it is mostly used in English in military or strategic contexts. For example, rendezvous here in five minutes. You could say this with your group of friends, but it sounds a little bit formal and, and military, all right? To split up means to separate. So for example, I lost my keys. Can we split up and look for them? Like look for them together. You go here, I'll go here, she will go here. So to split up is to separate, go into different directions to look for something in this situation. Okay, so they get on the train, they escape. Uh, but before that, Cloud runs into a girl. Uh, this is Eris, one of the characters from the game. And here you have the option of buying some flowers from her or just completely ignoring her and telling her to go away. So Cloud could say, you'd better get out of here because it's a dangerous situation. There was just an explosion and it's not a safe place or a safe time to be. Um, so you'd better, this is had better. This is used for strong obligation. You had better do something means if you don't do it, there could be negative consequences. For example, he'd better not be late. So he had better not be late. Or Square Enix had better not mess up the Final Fantasy VII remake. So this means uh, if this company, the company which made Final Fantasy VII does a poor job with the remake, many people will be upset because so many have strong ties and a love for the original game from 1997. All right, we're almost there. Let's keep going. Okay, so Barrett, Biggs, Wedge, Jesse, they're all on the train and Cloud is not there. Cloud got delayed by some enemy soldiers. So Biggs is worried and says, Cloud, think he was killed? Now notice that Biggs does not use a complete present simple question in this sentence, in this question. He just says, think he was killed. Like an affirmative statement, you know, uh, think he was killed, but with a question. He means, do you think he was killed? In spoken English, it is possible to remove the do you when you're asking a direct question to someone. And you could just say, hey, want a drink? Hey, need some help? Hey, feel like eating? Instead of, do you want a drink? Do you need some help? Do you feel like eating? Okay. So you can remove the verb do, remove the subject you, and jump straight to the verb. All right. And then suddenly there's a knock on the train. And there's another knock. The door opens and Cloud jumps in like some kind of ninja and Barrett is pissed at him. Barrett says, Cloud, having everyone worried like that, you don't give a damn about no one but yourself. He's calling Cloud selfish. 
Now, at this point, I feel it's important to mention that in 1997, the character of Barrett was written as square viewed black men to speak. So someone from the street. Um, so you see Haven and you see Bout and you don't give a damn. So give a damn means you don't care. Okay. Now, again, in, in speaking, you know, we do often cut off the ends of words, um, especially ing, like having, being, going, staying. Um, in this case, about, you could just say bout. So instead of having, you say having, or being, or going, or staying. So let's just practice this um, so you are able to, you know, understand it when you hear it in movies, TV shows, um, or even if you see it in a comic book or a novel. So repeat after me. Having, being, going, staying, bout. For example, stop being a jerk instead of stop being a jerk. All right, so they're all on the train together. They're going back to their, you know, hideout where they're going to plan their next mission. So let's keep going with the story. So they're all on the train. They walk into the next train car and Jesse starts talking to Cloud. She's showing him a computer that has a map of the city. And she says, I like this kind of stuff. Bombs and monitors, you know, flashy stuff. So when she says, I like this kind of stuff, this kind of stuff means stuff similar to this or things similar to this. You could also say this sort of stuff or sorta. All right, so sort of, kind of. Uh, again, for a fuller explanation of sort of and kind of, you can check out my other lesson on this topic. Flashy means impressive in a showy or obvious way. So for example, if something just makes you go, wow, um, it is flashy. So for example, a flashy car or a flashy necklace it has a lot of diamonds. It's very shiny and you notice it very easily. It's flashy or a flashy soccer player. For example, someone like Lionel Messi, the best soccer player in the world, arguably, he can be very flashy. Same with uh, Neymar or Zinedine Zidane was pretty flashy when he played. So these are flashy soccer players. All right. So they keep going. Barrett looks out the window of the train and he starts talking about the city as well, the city of Midgar, where they're going. So he says, if that plate weren't there, we could see the sky. So in the world of Final Fantasy VII, um, in this huge city of Midgar, there are massive plates that separate the lower citizens from the higher citizens. And Barrett uses the second conditional. He says, if that plate were not there, he has his if clause, if that plate were not there, using the past simple in the if clause, he says, we could see the sky. So just as a reminder, in the second conditional, what you are talking about is a present or future unreal situation. In this situation, there is a plate. You can't see the sky. The people who live at the bottom of Midgar cannot see the sky. All they see is, you know, a ceiling of metal and plates. And he says, we could see the sky. So in the result clause where he says, if that plate weren't there, we could see the sky. You can use would, could, might, um, plus a base verb. So for example, if I ever needed help, I would call you. So I don't need help right now, but if I did need help now, you are the person I would call. All right, so we're nearing the end of the mission. So let's keep going and do one more. Finally, they get off at the train station and Barrett says, meet back at the hideout, move out. So he's using an imperative command. First of all, a hideout is a secret meeting place that you, know, you can use for an organization or a group of people. Now, again, if he wants to 
you know, make sure that their secret organization stays a secret, maybe he shouldn't be yelling commands to people saying, meet back at the hideout, move out. You know, there are other people in the area who can clearly hear him. Now he's using imperatives. So how do we make an imperative? Like in most languages, just use the base verb, stop the car, move, study harder. Okay. So if you want to give a command, just use the base verb and the rest of your sentence. And this is how you can guide people. All right. So if you'd like to test your understanding of this material, as always, you can check out the quiz on ingvid.com. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it, comment on it, subscribe to the channel, check me out on Facebook and Twitter. And finally, if you would like me to do more videos specifically about Final Fantasy VII, if this video does 250,000 hits in the first six months, I will do a part two. If we hit 500,000, I will do all of disc one of the PlayStation original. And if we do get 1 million hits for this video in the first six months, I will play the entire game and do a let's play for you with a focus on English. So spread the word on Twitter, use the hashtag angvidff 7 if you want to see this happen. And also if you want to support our website, you can always donate at the link found here. Till next time guys, thanks for clicking. That was really cool. Oh, thanks Cloud. By the way, I never imagine your voice to sound like that. Well, it actually isn't. Um, I just think it's much cooler than the voice I have now. Whoa, did not need to hear that. That's the end. <laughs>